Another hypothesis test we can do is hypothesis testing with, with what are called matched pairs. Matched pairs are where we have before and after data, and we are looking to see, are things the same, or was there some type of improvement? Or maybe we'll pair together couples or, and see if there's a difference between you know, the husband's score and the wife's score. Or maybe we'll pair together twins to see if there's any difference between the twins. Or maybe we'll compare your left hand to your right hand. But the data is paired together, and we're looking to see if there's any type of difference. That is matched pairs. And so the question we're going to ask is, how do we hypothesize test for improvement? Or maybe it'd be better to say a difference. Has there been any change? And this is that idea of matched pairs. All the data comes in pairs, and the pairs are matched together. Usually, we have that before or after score. And the way matched pairs work is we're going to do a t-test for one mean. Just like we did a t-test for one mean before, the only difference is we will first find the difference for each pair. And then we'll use those differences as our one variable to figure out whether or not there is a positive, negative, or no difference between the before after data. So with that in mind, we've got some equations that we need to know to run this test. The distribution, it's very similar to the t-test distribution because it is a t-test. The only difference is we're going to put a little subscript of d on the x-bar to represent the average distance is a t-distribution with a subscript representing the degrees of freedom, where the degrees of freedom is simply the sample size minus 1. And then we can calculate the standard error. And the standard error is simply the standard deviation of the differences divided by the square root of the sample size. And we can use that standard error to find our test statistic, which very similar to the test statistic for a single mean is t is equal to the difference between the average difference and the hypothesized difference divided by the standard error. And the hypothesized difference is usually 0. We usually assume there's no difference between before and after scores. And we're looking to see, is there a difference? Or is it positive or greater than 0? Or is it negative or less than 0? Now, like before with the t-test, though, we're going to save all that work with using our calculator to do a lot of the manual crunching of the data for us. So first thing we're going to have to do on our calculator is we're going to have to tell the calculator all of our data. So here's how you enter the data into your calculator. You're going to start by hitting the Stat button. And then you will select Edit to edit a list. And the list, the Edit feature will already be highlighted when you hit Stats. So you just really have to hit Enter. And then in L1, you're going to enter the before data, or the first set of data. And then in L2, you will enter the after data, or the second set of data. And then for L3, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll up and highlight L3 and do L2 minus L1. And the calculator will automatically 
subtract and find all the differences and fill at list three with the differences. Now, the way we get that is you'll hit the second button. And you'll hit the number 2, which will give you L2, minus the second button. And then you'll hit the 1, which will give you the L1. And now in L3, you will have a list of all of the differences bef between the before and after. A positive difference means it got bigger. A negative difference will mean it got smaller. Then you're ready to actually run the t-test. So you can hit stat, scroll over to tests, and then scroll down to t-test. And even though there's two sets of data before and after, we're actually just working with the differences. So it's just one t-test. Don't do the two-sample t-test. It's a single sample t-test. That single sample is the difference between the before and after, checking to see if the numbers went up or down. So when you're running the t-test, you have to enter in some information. First thing you want to do is you want to highlight data because you're going you have entered the data into the calculator. We don't have the summary statistics. We actually entered the data this time. And that is different than our last t test. Then you'll see mu sub 0. That is the hypothesized difference. which is usually 0. We usually hypothesize that there's no difference, or that the difference equals 0. Then it'll ask for the list. The list you want to be L3, where you have all those differences entered. And the way we select L3 is you hit the second, and then the number 3 will give that third list. And finally, we'll enter in mu, which is the alternate hypothesis symbol. Are we looking for it to be smaller after the treatment, bigger after the treatment, or just not equal to 0 after the treatment? And as before, it's, this is a lot easier to see with an example. So let's do an example where we check these matched pairs for some type of improvement. A football coach wants to know if a strength class can help improve his players bench press weight. the before and after data is below. So we're going to have players. We'll just mark the players with letters to protect their identity, A, B, C, and D. have weights for before the class and after the class. So before the class, A bench 205. After, A bench 295. That looks pretty good. 
Before the class, B benched 241. After, B benched 252. Not as dramatic, but still an increase. C benched 338 before the class and 330 after the class. Well, C went down a bit. And D benched 368 and afterwards benched 360. So the question is, if alpha equals 0.05, can the coach conclude the class was helpful? We're going to run a hypothesis test of matched pairs to see if there's a significant difference. First, the null hypothesis is that the average distant difference is equal to 0. There's no difference. The alternative hypothesis is that the average difference is going to be positive or greater than 0 because the coach wants it to be helpful. He wants the difference to be positive. He wants it to be higher after than before, which means we have a one tail test, or better said, a right tail test. If we were to draw a picture of this, the hypothesized difference is 0. Somewhere over to the right, we hope to see improvement. And we hope that right tail shows there was enough improvement out of the class. Well, our distribution is that the average difference is a t distribution, and the degrees of freedom is 1 less than the sample size. There are four players. 1 less than that is 3. It's so very small degrees of freedom. It's going to take quite a difference in order to say there's a difference. So from here, let's go to our calculator and see if it can help us find the differences. To enter our information into the calculator, we're going to hit the Stat button right next to the arrows. Edit is already highlighted. If I already had numbers in my list, let's say there were numbers already in here that I didn't want, if you scroll up and highlight the list, and hit the Clear button, and then Enter. It'll clear out the list, so there's nothing left in the list. The first list is for the before data. So we'll enter in our data 205, 241, 338, and 368. The second list is our after data. Make sure they're entered in the same order, 295. 252, and 330, and 360. Then list 3 is where we're going to put our differences. So if we scroll up to highlight list 3, and then we're going to say take list 2 and subtract list 1. Hit second, and then the number 2. That'll grab list 2, minus second, and then the number 1. And now I see list 3 is equal to 2 minus 1. When I hit Enter, I will see all the differences. And that's the data we're going to use in our single mean t-test. To run the t-test, we'll hit Stat, scroll over to Test. Scroll down to the t-test. And this time, we've actually entered the data into the calculator. So we'll scroll over and highlight the data, Enter. The hypothesized mean is 0. For the list, our data is in list 3. That's where the differences are. So we'll hit second, 
and the number 3 to give us list 3. Leave the frequency alone. For the alternate hypothesis, we want to show that the mean is greater than 0. So we need to select the greater than alternate hypothesis. And then we're ready to actually calculate. When we do that, we get our t value of 0.91 and a p value of 0.2149. We're also told that the average difference is 21.25. So we can add that to our picture. The average difference is 21.25. But when we convert that to a t value, the t value was only 0.91. So the test statistic is that t equals 0.91, which gives us a p-value, an area for that tail of 0.2149. What that p-value means is, given our sample, The probability, the strength class, made no difference in bench press weight. because that's the null hypothesis, is 21.49%. There's a 21.5% chance that the class had no effect on bench press weight. And if we look at our alpha of 0.05, we see that is much bigger than the 0.05 alpha. Alpha is the minimum probability where we still believe the null hypothesis is true. We are well beyond that probability, much higher. So our decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is the p-value the probability that the null hypothesis is true is greater than alpha, which is our decision break. With numbers, the 0.2149 is greater than the 0.05. And so for our final conclusion, we will state that there is not sufficient evidence. And then we state the alternative hypothesis in context to conclude the strength class increased bench press weights. And so what you see is with the matched pair hypothesis test, it really is exactly the same as a single mean hypothesis test with the t distribution. The only difference is here we will focus exclusively on the differences. So first we have to calculate that after minus before relationship to see how much things have improved or decreased after the treatment. So that's how we do a hypothesis test for matched pairs. Take a look at a few of these on the assignment, and we will see you in class to continue to work on matched pairs a little more.